Hello and welcome to the flagship show edition of the Blue Monday podcast, a three times weekly show looking into all things Ipswich Town. I'm your host, Richard Woodward, and tonight I'm joined by the sole survivor of the virus that has swept through the Blue Monday camp, Joe Fares. Um, Joe, well done for making the podcast. Uh, we've lost Stat, we've lost Dave, um, so you get the gold star. Congrats. No, no worries. I've always do my best to put Blue Monday first ahead of all my other commitments. <laughs> He's playing through an injury as well. Are you, are you, are you carrying anything as well? Carrying an ankle? Yeah, sore, yeah. sore throat, flu, but I dragged myself off my sick bed to here. You're a hero. You're a hero. I'm sure everyone is very grateful. So, yeah, Stat has got, um, Stat's got an eye thing, and we asked about eye patches. That wasn't happening, sadly. Otherwise, that would have been brilliant for the video. And Dave has... Um, Dave's got internet issues, which um, can mean are all ma- manner of things. We won't go into any conspiracy theories there, but he might join us part way through. But I wouldn't. He hasn't. He hasn't paid his broadband bill. So. Let's go with that. Let's. That's, that's the lesser uh, controversial outcome. So with, uh, I don't know if this is the first podcast. It probably isn't actually, because me and Harry do the previews. But the first flagship, without possibly Dave and or Ben, I don't know. Um, Mikey might have done one with Stat and. I don't know. Are you before? I'm not sure. Either no, way, no we're like the first chimps in space. This is um, this is either going to go brilliantly or it's going to be a shocker. Um, but let's get down to business, shall we? Um, let's do a, a bit of news. Um, so, Joe, you can um, give me your opinions on all of this stuff. You can be as controversial as you want. No one's going to argue with you, apart from me. So, um, let's start with um, Chambo's Player of the Year. I think that came out just as we were recording the flagship last time around. Um, thoughts on that one? Um, I, I personally voted for him, but I, I, I don't think anyone was worthy of the award this year. There was nobody who'd done enough on the pitch to win it, so I voted for him purely for his sort of off pitch, sort of off pitch role and what he's done off the pitch and trying to sort of hold the club together. And but on the pitch, I probably said my probably best player was probably Trevor Chalaber, but I don't think he'd done anywhere near enough to win it. I know some people said Matthew Pennington. I think the same with him. I don't. Like I say, I don't think there was any any choices really. No one had stood out, so yeah, it was just a, almost a protest vote. But I think he he deserves the award for what he's done for the club over his time here, let not for what he's done on the pitch this season. I think it's the only acknowledgement that the fans have got any kind of power over as well that they can kind of give out. So I, I supported that line of thinking as well, and um, so and I'm, I'm he was pretty downbeat about winning it as well wasn't he which I guess is sums him up as a character as no one yeah. kind of feels like we, anyone's earned it this season no um, no one has moving forward to Wednesday last week season tickets were announced um, reductions across the board 12.5% for um, general areas and 15% for families and then this kind of town targets which I think is additional discounts on top so if we reach 12,000 season tickets there's an additional 10% discount 13,000 15% 14,000 20% I mean it's you can't do much wrong there Evans that's pretty decent isn't it yeah when I, when I saw the announcement I thought that they've sort of ticked every box that I I'd have liked them to have ticked with regards to season ticket price I don't think there was ever going to be a sort of one of those 200 pound season tickets that I think some people would have wanted and that realistically that was never ever going to happen I think the the drop was about as big as they could go when you look at it on a game to game sort of basis against even competing clubs in the area sort of Colchester's Peterborough they, those sort of clubs at that level those levels below us local there we're sort of very competitive with those and we're sort of a, a much bigger club than than they are and so I think I think the club have got it right. They've got the announcement right. The targets is a is a good scheme. The early bird, the getting it in, the renewal freeze being as well. You... Yeah, the renewal being even cheaper than the early bird. The freeze yeah. if we do go up. I think there's. I think they've. I think they've got it all right. And they, I think they've announced today that they've had 400 new sign ups so mm. far, which is positive. I, I can't imagine when those 400 were at yesterday's game. <laughs> it wasn't a good effort, was it? No, I'm one of those 400. I'm pleased to say, um, yeah. and I think they said something like 8,000 had renewed as well. Um, and I think a few more will over the next few weeks. Obviously, before sixth of May, I think is. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine the 8,000 are the ones that have rolled over the direct debits initially, who mm. just continue the scheme. But no, it's, it's positive, and I think we will end up with more season ticket holders next season than we had this season I'm, I'm not sure we'll probably hit that 12,000 to get that 10% target but that's that's a realistic target and I think we've got a chance of getting there so hope, hopefully we do yeah 
there's more fans in the ground and everyone's got more money in their pocket ultimately if that happens precisely yeah good shout and and evans kind of came out and, and kind of offered up an apology as well we've got plenty of questions about evans in there but did you think that was kind of fair or did it was it kind of a bit of lip service to how terrible the season's been <laughs> it's difficult I, I don't think he can really win on anything like this i think if he's if he says it people will moan about how he says it. If he doesn't say it, people will moan that he hasn't said it. I personally think it was a, a decent message. I, I, I agreed with the main hub of the message. I, I do think he needed to apologise to the fans because a lot of the blame for this does like his door. Yeah. But the sort of the main concern I have is when he talks about the youngsters playing alongside the senior players, it worries me that it becomes a little bit of a cost-cutting exercise and it's oh, we're playing alongside senior players like Bart, Scoos, Chambers, Alan Judge. Well, I think most people will agree that both sort of Chambers and Scoos are players that haven't performed as well as they have, and they're getting to a stage of their careers where they're they're sort of going backwards rather than forwards. And if they're the senior players with the youngsters, there needs to be a bit more quality in there. They need to be players of the quality of Alan Judge and Bart when he's on his game. Not experience doesn't mean quality, does it? In that lower leagues mm. and. You've got to get that balance right. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people have kind of picked up with the kind of the inference that it's about maybe cost cutting and and that kind of stuff. It, I mean, hopefully, we we haven't seen a great deal good from Chambers or Scoots as you say this season. It feels like maybe that that needs to start to be phased out. We, again, we've got questions on that, so we're going too far. And we'll come back to Mr. Biakowski as well when we talk about Swansea shortly. Um, bringing things right up to date. Easter weekend, Friday, um, Preston away. Um, I made the trip up um, to Preston, which was um, a mistake. Um, <laughs> um, but at least I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway there because I'm in the Midlands. Um, you, you managed to catch some of this as well. Um, two goals in each half um, from Robinson and Nemecha. Two really decent goals from Callum Robinson. Um, but boy, do we give him some help along the way. First half, good performance from Bishop. Um, but he faded somewhat in the second half. You off somewhere, Jay? No. no, I think my, my other half needs to come in and do something on the main computer, <laughs> so I'm just trying to keep it off screen. Okay. Um, <laughs> and Yeah, and, and just defensively, second half, particularly the third goal, um, really poor from Bart. Um, your summing's up a Preston. It, was that a reaction to kind of relegation, or was that just, um, well, it was just crap? Which is it? I, I think it was a reaction to relegation. I think it can go, it's, it sometimes can go either way there, when you've got that big sort of bubble of, relegation it comes together and all of a sudden it it bursts and either that will fire the players up or it just totally drains the life out of them you often see it with the youth teams when a lot of the players when they get their first pro contract you think there's going to be a brilliant sort of brilliant performance coming the other day but ultimately it just becomes that they've they've sort of climbed that mountain and they've hit it and now it just everything goes flat after that i think that's sort of similar to relegation on the other side everything has been building up to that moment it's happened and now the pressure's released and rather than playing without pressure that it, it just went flat that's, mm. that's how it looked to me and from the very first minute we I said I watched it on the I follow and just we, from minute one we were sloppy with the ball we were g- giving the ball away and I don't know it just it, it was just a really really poor performance and when we did get chances we we did take him I think Bishop had a good chance good t- spin and a shot um, Jackson hit the bar as well having kind of jinx yeah. through kind of Marcus Stewart style until the finish and um, we kind of have conflicting views about what he should have done there but good opportunities nonetheless that you know might have changed the game a little bit yeah it's the same story as it's been every season all, sorry all season we we don't score when we get chances and I'm not saying Bishops was a brilliant chance but it was a as good a chance as either of Callum Robinson's goals were and we, we don't hit the net they do and <clears throat> the game's over when we can see because we just do not have enough goals in us but yeah. Not good. And uh, Lambert came out afterwards and wasn't happy. Uh, Judge said that he was embarrassed. Um, a lot of rotation for the Swansea game. But the the key thing, to, I think, to pick up, kind of using your kind of academy kind of insights as well, Emmanuel started that game, taken off at half-time. Yeah. It feels like every time he gets an opportunity, Emmanuel, it's kind of two steps forward, one step backwards. Um, do you think he's going to get a chance in League One? Because that's probably more his level, yeah. isn't it? Well, Lambert has confirmed we're going to be taking up the option on on him so he's going to be there I personally wouldn't have him as first choice right back going into next season I think if he is if he does go in there as first choice we're going to be in a little bit of trouble so hopefully but he'll he'll get opportunities because 
whoever's going to come in isn't going to come in and play 46 games next year or is very unlikely to so he's going to need to be there and he might take his um, opportunity when he gets it hmm. we'll see um, let's bring things right bang up to date um, with Swansea on Easter Monday um, seven changes um, from that team at Preston um, the biggest in goal um, Dean Gherkin um, comes in into nets there. Callum Elder also, a lesser spot of Callum Elder, um, makes a start at left back. Otherwise, it's relatively similar. Joe's back to normal. That's good. Just rotating backwards. Lovely stuff. Um, <laughs> NCR, the Chambers of Brie. Um, midfield, um, Downs is um, it main, keep, keeps his place. Um, but Chalibur and Dizel come in. And then Judge Keane, who came off the bench of Preston and Edwards um, in this kind of 4-3-3 type formation Joe any any thoughts particularly on Gherkin and Elder I personally didn't see the point in either of the, in either of those players playing or coming in Gherkin we've all seen and we've seen enough from he's either going to be good enough for us next year or he isn't nothing he's going to do between now and the end of the season is going to change anyone's mind on him if Bart is going and then maybe look to keep Gherkin if Bart doesn't go then we'll we'll play Bart and we won't keep Gherkin as a number two in that league Elder's still got another year in his contract at Leicester. Okay. I can't see I can't see that we're gonna sign him. You might as well have given Jonas Knudsen a run out as a farewell performance. He was he yeah. was there. I don't know, that that elder loan's been a bit of a disaster really, all things considered. Hmm. Any any thoughts on whether he comes back for another season next year? Because he's not gonna play at Leicester, let's be honest, is he? Poss- possibly. He he hasn't um he he probably I wouldn't say he did enough yesterday, but I thought he was he looked more of an all round player than Miles Kenlock is, but he probably should be. He's twenty five, he's played sort of a fair bit more senior football and I know I don't think he's a big enough improvement from Kenlock to justify bringing him in. I think if you bring him in you're gonna end up with two players at a similar level and I'm not sure that that's worth it for anyone because you'll be in that same position next year. Why would we play in the lone player ahead of our own youngster when they're of a similar level? Yeah. So you either need to, you need to bring in a better left back to compete with Kenlock or I don't know. I, I, I don't see the point in Elder personally. Yeah. No, I think a lot of people would sympathize with that view. Um, on to Swansea then, um, who have no away wins since early January and have lost seven away matches on the trot. Um, they start with North Fallon goal, um, Norton, Cameron Carter-Vickers, um, former Ipswich Loney last season, Van der Horn and Roberts. Um, two midfield, Fulton and Grimes sitting with McBurney, um, Byers, Routledge and James kind of moving all over the place and floating around. I think McBurney started out wide left and James was kind of up front and then I think second half um, they switched around. Um, on the benches, worth calling out uh, Corey and Darber on the bench again um, and Tristan Nidham as well. Um, do you expect, I think Lambert said that he wants Ndarba to get some first team football before the end of the season. Um, any thoughts on whether that will be a start or that will be a 10 minute cameo? I I'd, um, expected him to get some football over the weekend, to be honest, rather than over the coming two games against two of the division's sort of better teams, I, who were who at the time would still look like they were going to be in a promotion race. I'd thought it was being, I know McCarthy did this, but sort of the integrity of the competition. I don't think it'd have been fair to had Leeds been playing to go up on the last day to put in Corey and Darber for his debut against them would be. I know I, I don't think that would have been the right thing to do, but. No. It looks like with with the results how they've gone, it doesn't look like it's going to matter now. No, well, more on the more on that as well. Um, so let's get into the action. Um, just quickly we'll with, with Swansea's team, I was um, I was looking today because someone's like, oh, player for player, they look so much better than we do. They've got a better squad on paper, and I think you look at you look at that team they put out there, and sort of testament to the job Graham Potter's done and playing the youngsters. You've got like Byers, Fulton, Fulton Grimes, James, yeah. Roberts. None of these have barely played a game for them before this season. They're all sort of under twenty three players that have played. I think McBurney was one of the only was one of the very few with championship experience, taking out obviously taking out the two centre backs, Wayne Routledge, but who's thirty four, thirty five, and um, Kyle Norton, who's an experienced premiership campaigner. The rest are sort of youngsters, players that I've seen playing in the under twenty threes for Swansea for years, and they came in and they knew exactly what they were doing, they knew their game plan, they knew how to how they were going to play the ball out from the back and while they did blow us away, I thought they were good value for their win. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. And the system kind of, they've, as you say, they're nowhere to be. I think there's generally some 
a little bit more rigidity about the back four and then there's two sitters but those the front four that we've talked about will move around they will rotate but they know exactly where to be they have got the discipline where you compare it with the likes of judge um and there will be and there's questions about judge coming up as well um there isn't that position, positional discipline there, or if judge floats around, which as he does, no one's smart enough to kind of compensate and move into a position, and we're not just getting narrow and narrow. And that happened at Preston. You kind of tweeted their average positions, didn't you, for the starters? What a mess that was. Yeah, and um, it, and they they made progressing the ball up the pitch look so easy compared to us. The mm-hmm. goalie would get the ball, and they'd they'd work it up there. We're, we we had to work so hard to get the ball back, and when we did get it back, we gave it back so easily. And when we're on the ball, you could have you could have thrown a quilt, and it would have covered sort of four or five of our players. Everything is just worked so close together, and it's all just so frantic. And there's just such a lack of quality. It takes a mistake from the other team for us to look like we've got any quality. Mm. Um, well, it was a mistake from us that nearly um, let Swansea get the the typical five minute goal that we concede. Um, NCR misses a long kick forward by Nordfelt. Um, it falls through to James, who is rapid as we know, um, but his one on one, he's in in on Gherkin and kind of dinks it wide. Um, that was an early alarm call there. Um, it was similar to. Um... Just saw it. Shane Long just scored the fastest goal in Premier League history tonight. Um, oh, I've not seen that. Oh, okay, we'll have to watch that one later. Um, six, six, six seconds. Watford had the kick off and he scored within six seconds. I think he scored um, that's three goals now in the last couple of weeks, having mm. had an amazingly barren run of scoring goals. Um, good on Shane Long. Um, 50 minutes. So, uh, as Joe's kind of alluded to, there's not a huge amount in this game. Um, Swansea probably build and get better as the half goes on, but there's not a huge amount of clear-cut action. Um, Byers um, goes down in the penalty area looking for a um, for a penalty on Gherk, and he kind of falls over him and, and goes looking for a penalty, and the referee's not having any of that, so yellow. Um, and then five minutes later, Flynn Downs, after a nice little bit of interplay on the left-hand side, Downs kind of dashes through the middle and is um, upended as... Um, they would write the paper by Fulton and he picks up a yellow card as well. We're at 20 minutes. I've talked about one goal math action. Um, 27 minutes. Um, Swansea really should score. Um, Bree a little bit AWOL down the right hand side. Chalabras to cut him across to cover. But Bernie um, gets his cross back to Fulton who can, kind of gets a looping shot. And Routledge, um, who's got in front of his man at the far post, um, just has to prod it into the net and get, um, hits it over the bar. Um, not a great um, start from Ipswich, but the game settles down a little bit as the half goes on. Um, Bree does well down the right hand side, wins a corner, um, and then we've got a bit of pinball. Um, there's a shove on Edwards, possibly in the build up, but the ball hit falls to Keane. He hits the post, and then Chalaber kind of swipes it wide with his shot, and that was the first real kind of clear clear cut action. Thoughts on whether we should do better with that chance, Joe? We're quite close in, aren't we? But it's a good sign. Well, it, yeah, well, Keane, I think, was just a reaction, sort of poke of the ball and it hits the post. But Ed, when Edwards goes up to win the header, he does have two Swansea players just jump into him and sort of clatter him. I don't know whether because he wins the header, the ref doesn't give it, but anywhere else on the pitch, that is a, that's a foul. They're, there's no intention to get the ball. They're just trying to put him off and they just jump into him and both hit him. Chalaber, yeah, he's, he's a good enough player that he, that he could have easily done a lot better with that. He just sort of shins it and sort of shanks it off for a for a corner and it doesn't oh sorry goal kick and it doesn't actually go that far wide that if that hits a target that's probably going in so and and that was probably the, the pick of the, our chances or our few chances and and to be fair that's the, that is where my first half notes end that's how kind of I'd call it mediocre it's pretty average uh, well average is mediocre is worse than average isn't it um I, we weren't as bad as Preston. That was the only consolation I could think of. <laughs> we didn't concede stupidly early goal to ruin the match. Um, but Swansea, you say, much more organised, much tidier, um, knew what they were doing. Um, Ipswich just disjointed. Um, your thoughts on kind of the pick of the first half? Who was who, anyone stood out for you, Joe? Or not really? Probably Flynn Downs. And yeah, I, I, th- I thought it was a pick of the second half as well. But he was the only one. He sort of flew into a couple of challenges and. Sort of fairly, I don't mean he sort of made bad fouls, but he flew in and won the ball back a couple of times and showed a bit more desire than anyone else. He was the one that got away, which won us the corner, got away from his man, knocked it around the corner. Oh, was got, it? Down to the, got down to the byline and pulled it back looking for Keane, but 
hit hit the man, but he he was the one that showed the most desire in there and actually showed quality. Had a couple of shots that were blocked and a yeah, it was a one at the end of cross. the half where uh, Nciola heads a co- judge called onto the roof of the net, which I've I've got here but haven't called out. But I th- I, I agree, Downs that was one of his better games. I thought. Um, yeah. Um, um, was it Downs who got down the side for that for the corner as well that I talked about? That was that him? Yeah. Rather than Bree, fine. I was the other side of the stand, so um, let's move into the second half then, because um, <laughs> it's not going to get better for us. Um, James, Dan James is now um, on the left-hand side, um, and he's getting quite a lot of space. Um, again, it's alarm bells. Um, Fifty-three minutes. Um, he has a low curler, far post. I'm sat right behind it. It's just going to curl inside the post and Gherkin, to be fair to him, gets down well and saves that. Um, thoughts on Gherkin? I thought his kicking was better noticeably longer kicks yesterday but uh, he's not he's not better than Bart is he no he's not and he isn't, he isn't going to be he's older than Bart and he's he's never been better than him and never will be so but he, he might be who we have in league one if Bart does go but I, I, I don't see the point in keeping him he's had such injury issues last year that if you're only going to carry one senior keeper which we might very well do in that league I don't think you can afford to have somebody who's had such such injuries over the last 18 months mm. and patchy form as well um this is the goal now um joe and again it's uh, it's james that is um front and center for this one he um really good move down the left hand side he cuts in has a shot hits the it's like inside of the post bounces out and uh yeah do you want to talk us through this bit are you yeah, right in front was, of, is this right in yeah, front of you right in front of me yeah there's actually chalaba get, gets caught in possession he he mm. tries to he tries to do a little back heel and Somebody just gets his body in the way, and he should have just pulled him back and taken the yellow card there because it was dangerous. Ball finds its way to James, who absolutely levers one from the edge of the box. Gherkin actually gets across and gets a fingertip to it to knock it onto the post. Okay. It's a really good save, but it flies across, and I think Elder's a little bit slow to react if I'm being critical, and Routledge is just there, and he just has to smash the ball into the open goal. Edziala tries to get a block in, but Routledge isn't going to miss that. It, was, it looked harder on the replay than it did in real time it was a there's a lot of the goal to aim at and he sort of put it away as a you'd expect an experienced player too yeah and I, I think it was another Swansea player that was that also react quicker as well so there was two of them potentially going for that one um and, and it, it'd been coming hadn't it as well and that was the frustration because um, yeah. we concede we generally lose the match um of late um <laughs> 64 minutes, I wrote this down because it was pretty dumb, actually. Um, Swansea fans are charting, how shit must you be? Um, we're winning away. Um, yeah. And I kind of wanted to get the programme out and point at the league table. Um, yeah. cause, Have you not noticed? How yeah, I, I, th- yeah, I think Preston did it on Friday as well. Um, uh, yeah, we're, we're going down, that's how shit we are. Um, 65, um, double change here. Um, I don't think the formation changes, does it? I think... Probably it's the switch. It's the two. The personnel are different to what we would expect. So Quiner comes on for Dizel. Dizel, Joe, um, quiet, wasn't he? Yeah, he, uh, he was better than he was in the last game, but that was a very low bar he'd set in that game. So that was probably the worst performance I'd ever seen him put in, and nothing, nothing really was coming off for him. He was, he was trying to press, and he was getting about and getting himself about well, but ultimately he, he doesn't have the physicality to get to get around and put pressure on players and actually make a difference. It's like a, I know it's like when I'm playing football and I press people, they know I'm not going to tackle them. So <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really make a difference. Just but, there to put them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a shame. I just, I, I, I don't think he's suited to the role that he's been asked to play, which is effectively a sort of box to box midfielder. And Flynn Downs was saying after the game, that he's been asked to play as an eight. It's the first time he's done this, which, and he's getting used to, it. he needs to add more to his game. But I, I like I say, Dizel just isn't ever going to be that player. He'd, and if that's how Lambert wants him to play, then we may as well look to cash in on him in the summer. So, like some Easter miracle, having slagged him off at the start of the show, uh, David Diamond has been, res- his laptop has been resurrected in Easter style. Dave, welcome to the pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, I, I, initially, obviously, I guess you've explained I'm a sub for stat in the first place. And I was thinking about this, and I feel like perhaps like Colin Quain, but with a better first touch. <laughs> <laughs> you were ducking down under the sky. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, it Mrs. D- Mrs. D's been down the post office with ten pound to get the bill paid, and he's back Certainly online. Has, mate. Just quickly, just got the extra stamp on the bill. That's what it was, mate. Yeah. And then, and then he turned right. it. Off. Turned it off, and then turned it back on. At least it was you guys. At least it weren't. I was getting shit from Ben. 
It's a bit of him, Ben. I've been absolutely slaughtered. I'm sure you guys have slaughtered me anyway, but yeah, it's been <laughs> we were actually quite better. nice about it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> we haven't said that you ruined the pod at all, and there'll be plenty of people um, who will, will welcome you back. And poor Joe is having to answer every single question, give you some really controversial opinions, including um, we're going to sell Andre Dazelle. That's what I've just been told. Uh, um, yeah, okay. But yeah. let's um, let's rewind and get a controversial opinion from you. Um, who was to blame for the goal? This one's you Chalab- got Chalabar. Chalabar. Okay. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, it, if, if it was, I did say. I, I, yesterday was the first um, first game I've missed this season at home. Um, um, Mrs. D had an operation last week, so I very kindly thought, no, let me hold us have my ticket, stay in, be with Mrs. D. So that's good points in the can, in the bag, like that. But the goal was what, what I saw of it. Um, Shalabar just lost the ball in me. It, was it? I hope this was the goal or a totally yeah, different yeah. move. Shalabar lost the, tried to back heel it in midfield, tried a Cruyff turn in midfield, got dispossessed, looked very casual to me. Um, and James obviously picked the balls up wide left, could Bree have closed him down slightly better. I don't know. He dropped his shoulder. And perhaps, and again, yeah, okay, perhaps a little bit of fault when the ball came off the post. Again, in typical Ipswich fashion, who was first to react? Routledge and. Mm. Um, and not one of our defenders, so I would I would be the proximate cause. I would say to that goal with Shalabar in the first instance. I think Joe has concurred with that view as well. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I said that Shalabar should have just once he'd lost the ball, which he shouldn't have done. He should have just pulled him down and taken the yellow nice. card. Because, it, right, it, yeah, right, this goes right the way through the season. We're too nice. If you're that last, if you're that last man in midfield and you lose a ball and on the turn, your team's in trouble, and you just have to do what you got to do, don't you? What was the game last season? It's a classic. The um, what game was that? I know what it was. Sheff last season. Remember the Sheffield Wednesday? The goal that Anua scored right at the end when they had the yeah. we had the ball in the corner. Right in the corner, yeah. Someone yeah. got turned in midfield. I forget who it was. I, I can't remember who it was, but it's almost exactly the same position. And you know, Ipswich being so nice, they will let us have going down. Yeah, we won't. You know, like ninety seventh minute, we won't hack him down. We just let him. You know, let him let him get on with the play. Um, which is too nice. You see right. the way that. Yesterday, who who was it? Somebody broke from the midfield right on the halfway line. I think it was Downs, and they just kicked his legs yeah, it was away. Fulton. Take, yeah, yeah, took him back. Yeah, into... you, you mentioned it earlier. Take the yellow card, move on. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Skews does it occasionally, but I think he's just slow and late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know, you know, there's no, he's, he's got a fair excuse, but yeah, which is I think we're too nice. And uh, what you, the comment you made about what I heard you say about Dazelle and selling him. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I don't think he's going to make it as a player at Ipswich. I really don't. I just, I just don't. If if he's being asked to play, I know we're repeating ourselves a little bit for the listen. But if he's being asked to play that role of a box to box midfielder that's got to get in and about and press people and get in their faces, then there's no point in having him. He, he's, him. he's got to well, sit there. He's got, he's got to sit there deep and be giving the ball off the defenders and yeah, like a quarterback. set the tempo of the game and pass and pass and pass. And yeah, he's got to be trusted to do that. And yeah, but. And it ain't going to be, it. and I don't think, and I don't think it's going to be easier for him in League One either. I think it's just going to be all much more, you know, that was the old saying, hurly burly for an Ipswich manager. But it's going to be much more frenetic, I think, in League One. To be fair. Well, I think that, so. We've been chatting about this on the previous show. Then they they give you a bit more time. I think it's it's not as confrontational, not as um, high press as the Championship League One. I think you do get a little bit more time, but I think so. But okay. but Lambert's system it doesn't it doesn't work for a whoever is up front because they're isolated, and b it doesn't appear to work for Dazelle either because he's he's not going to push. He, he could possibly push on and be a number ten, but that's Quinn. Um, that's Quinn's job, isn't it? And um, Alan Judge, sorry, Alan Quinn, um, and, and okay. Downs is the sitter, isn't he? Yeah. What is it? What is M Lambert system? It's, Don't get me um, started on the front two. <laughs> Jesus what did Christ. I say? It was Joe off your tweet? It was something like two, two, three, one, one, something. Um, yeah. Messy. Don't, don't you guys think? And Judge is a case in point. Ed, and I've said this before. Judge, to my mind, has got to play between the lines, between the penalty, yeah, between and the ten roll, between the penalty, yeah. waste, drifting out wide, right. Drifting out left, drifting all over the park, total waste. waste. I think he's I think he's all right to drift around, but I think nominally he has to come from the centre to drift yes. out there rather than drifting yeah. because exactly we lose all our shape when he's yeah. when he's drifting yeah. everywhere. And again, I was saying earlier where you just end up with four or five players, you could almost throw a blanket over them. They're, they're all so close to the ball because he's just following the ball round and. We just end up with one right. side. All our players there. You looked at Swans yesterday. They had one guy on the right wing, one guy on the left. As soon as they get the ball, wing is yeah. split, and 
there, but we, we just it's all very, that you're, you're, you're dead right there, because even in front of me where I sit, it's all very tight and squashed, and they're having to play precise one-touch passes, and well, they're just not up to <laughs> Yeah, most of the teams just aren't up to that. You know, Judge can, and, but yes. Judge and Edwards yeah. swapped sides about five times in the first half to kind of make up for that. Mm. Um, but are they instructed to do that? I mean, surely, I mean, do, do, they, do they bring this upon themselves? Do they take it, it upon themselves? I wouldn't be surprised it if like, Judge it looks like Judge just It looks like Judge just does what he wants and yeah. Edwards has to effectively play around him. So if Judge gets across that side, Edwards has to just get to the other side to try and give some shape. That's how it looks to me. So yeah. not, no, no, I agree with that. So anyway, we'll yeah. see. Well, uh, we, we've got questions about judge. We've got questions about tactics. Um, there's not much for us, Wansey, to talk about. Um, where do we get to? Quana was subbed on for Dizel. Jackson was on for Keane. Um, thoughts on Will Keane, Joe? Um, I th- he, little cameo at Preston. He's probably the best of, of the options we've got at the moment, isn't he? Up front? Yeah, but by some distance, he's our best striker. He's he's one of the only ones that can play that that role of you almost need to be a complete forward to play in this system. He's not the best in the air, but when he's up against the defenders, but he can drop in short, he gets a ball, he can bring other people into the game, he runs the channels well. He, he's he's just a very bright, very good player. If we can keep him fit and we can sign him, he'll be a good sign him. But think we yesterday, can sign him, Joe. Do you think we can get him? We've got a chance. He's in think? the building, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, he's in the he's in the building. That's always yeah. a Always a help, but I think he's right. going to take a huge pay cut wherever he's going because he's on big money at Hull. It's just whether True. somebody more geographically convenient wants to sign him who's in a higher level. Someone who's can say, look, yeah, you don't have to move house from where you're living and you can have the same money as, or do you want to move down to Ipswich effectively? So we'll see. But he was so isolated yesterday. It was at certain points, there was no one within 30 yards of him. And like, that's not even exaggerating. There was no one close to him at all for certain bits of it and it's just long balls up there and if he got there he'd have had to hold the ball up for three or four seconds to get somebody else in play he won some good thought, headers just was... to himself didn't he flicked it on for, for to no one basically but he no, no, one. no one no one was busting a gut to support him either there was a, a number of times where a long ball goes forward and we sort of run it up there whether it was jackson later in the game or Keane up there or kwana and there's four or five defenders that have got back but not one of our attacking players have joined them it's like why are they where is that desire to get it's, there? It's exactly. It's not just that. It's not just attacking players. It's attacking midfield players. You know, you got to get beyond. You got to make that run beyond the. You know, beyond the front player. It's, yeah, which is something. Got you're right. It's just desire. But look, you know, there's no wonder there's a lack of desire there at the moment. No, exactly right. Um, let's let's finish off Swansea because uh, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about in the questions along these lines, and um, there's some really good questions as well. Um, so it's it's. Um, Keen, uh, sorry, it's Jackson that goes out wide, wide right rather than up front, and it's Quiner up front. Um, McBurney um, has a good chance uh, across from Dan James, who is probably the best player yesterday. Joe, for you? Yeah, I'd, I'd make him man of the match. He just, he's he's so fast. He just scares you when you can't get you can't get tight to him because as soon as you're tight to him, he's just gone, and he's he's got good feet. His end product was a little bit lacking, but he's, he created the goal and put in one. I have a really good ball that you said earlier where Gherkin sort of pushed it aside, but no, he's a he's a difference maker at that, that, this level. Hmm. And McBurney, it's, he's glanced ahead of just wide there. Um, big chance for Kwana, um, played through by Downs, I think it is again. Um, and um, good save. <laughs> he's through. Wow, he's he's through on goal. It's a pretty a lame save. shot, isn't it, Joe? Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not, not a huge he, amount he, of power. He, though. Got them well. he picks a, he picks a corner. That's a good save, isn't it? But. You'd, you'd expect him to score, but those one-on-ones aren't always easy coming in from that angle. But he's 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 done well to create the chance, like he did against Brentford. He's like I say, I'm not. I know he's sort of started off quite poorly here, Quana, but I think he has improved over his spell. And like I said there's no, there's no chance we sign him, but we'll see where he ends up. And another useful contribution from Downs. Um, 78 Bishop comes on for Chalaba. Um, thoughts on Chalaba? <laughs> wasn't a good one for him yesterday, was it? Was that a combination of tactics and relegation in his kind of thinking about next season? Or what do you he, was, he was just... Um, it was just one of those games where he was... He has these games where he's a sleep part of it. And when he gets going, he's fine. But he's, he spent too too long asleep yesterday for me and yeah, on the ball. Yeah, he's very casual, isn't he? He has those times where he's just, yeah, you know, I'd say sleepy, you know, not aware, but just, I just call it casual, almost lazy. Mm. Yep. Um, he's not like that because when he's really up for it and driving through, he's that's not him. But yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's he's got big high, big highs and quite 
quite low lows, doesn't he, Jalabar? Yeah, I guess yeah. you can't read a huge amount. But he's a kid. He's, he's 20, after relegation, can you? He's coming, he's coming in and out of the team at the moment yeah, as well, which yeah, isn't yeah. easy to... Yeah. Like I say, the, the whole midfield is changing every game at the moment, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, um, I mean... 82, you, you look, go on, sorry, no. Sorry, yeah, I mean, you look again, you look at the players, Chelsea... Um, you know, you look at him and Christ. You look at the lad from the lad from Wigan, James, Reece uh, James, right. <laughs> and Mason Mount. My God, Mason Mount. I mean, I've watched that James. I don't know if you mentioned this in the um, the Wigan the Wigan Leeds game on whenever it was at Friday Saturday. He was just a different. He was heading. He was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. That, that one man team second half. Run in the, in the ninety second minute that run he did where he just. And then, and then watch the EFL show. No, the, yeah, the EFL show on um, on on Quest and. Um, and they, they basically gave man of the match that I think the guy who scored there was a Jago Scott, I can't remember who scored the goals. The guy who scored the Ashton, two goals didn't even give yeah. yeah, didn't even give James a mention of what? Oh, he's unbelievable. Yeah. But just, that just shows the strength, doesn't it? Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> who's got a chance when they're sweeping up all those players, eh? But yeah. um A two Jackson down the right hand side breaks through, crosses straight at Norton but wins the corner. Um Judge takes that corner and Chambers heads it wide. And that is pretty much it. That's 82 minutes. Swansea kind of um, a few counters forward, but nothing much of note. Um, Judge has a shot that's wide. Um, we have six minutes of added time that's announced, and everyone kind of was a bit miffed at six minutes. It was, can we not just go home, please? Um, the last bit of note is Gherkin comes up for a corner, and the oh, corner is yeah. wasted, um, and he has to run back. Total waste yeah. of time. So in the end, pretty straightforward for Swansea. Um, too organised. Better quality in the in the moments that mattered, um, and Ipswich. It's another Easter defeat, um, and an, an opportunity to double a team um, goes because that was it really. That was the only chance we've ever got now. Um, One nil, gents. Um, any summings up of that before we get onto the questions? Um, to be expected just, or? I think I think to be expected. I've got one question as it wasn't there yesterday. Did anyone hang around for the lap of appreciation? Um, I, I took a video of it from my posh seats in the Cobbold. Um, yeah. But apart from the people in the North Stand Lower, there was there was a scattering in the other stands. It wasn't there wasn't a huge yeah, amount as... of people hanging around. Yeah, yeah. And did someone say? I think my lad said did Tom Tom Addy Amy actually appeared. I saw Emir Hughes. I actually oh, saw really? Emir Hughes. Saw him. Yeah, yeah. He was able to walk and everything. It was really like some, I, didn't have your camera out like some old twitcher. I was, I was uh, going to take a picture of him. I really was. I spotted Emir. I, I, I saw Tom Adiami score a goal at Portman Road last yes, month. Yes, mm, you did, did, didn't you? You did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, um, I mean, the, the 23's got, have some players got like playoff game finals and stuff. Peter, all... Yeah, I haven't actually, I've forgotten all the details on that. I think they've got, oh, crew is it maybe the under 23's? Yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. At home. And the yeah. under-18s are away at Sheffield Wednesday. Okay, I don't so know. Like oh, playoffs. Don't know where I got Peter playoffs, from. Yeah, then. one-legged playoffs. But there's actually talk that the Sheffield Wednesday away under-18s game might actually be this Saturday. Oh. So I think possibly taking so, both. So yeah, so some people might be able to take in both if they're up there, go to the Sheffield Wednesday game. At, but I think it's got, it has to be at Hillsborough. So whether they make it there or not, or whether they move it, but it, there's a potential. I'll, I'll update details from the Academy Twitter account if anybody is interested in doing both there might be the potential to get both in there on Saturday you might get more people going to the 18 to 23s game then coming <laughs> better chance to see the win isn't there yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'm not looking for uh-huh. Sheffield United um, let's do some questions guys um, Mark Jupp asks um, goals win matches our strikers can't find the net neither do our midfielders when was the last time a defender scored from a corner um, what area does Lambert need to address first for our League One campaign Dave do you want to have a bash at this um, one. Obviously, a goal scorer is, is key for me. Um, yeah, probably another central. Uh, Wolfman coming back, you probably need cover there. Another central defender, and probably a um, and probably a fullback. I think we've we've got more than enough midfield players. I think for League One for sure. But um, I'd say right back, cover at centre, cover at centre, centre back, and certainly a some sort of goal scoring hulk of a striker if they yeah, exist yes. now. Joe, any thoughts on the lack of defensive goals from corners? That's <laughs> since we lost Berra and Smith, we we don't really score from corners, do we? We're not a very we're not a very big team, are we? Really, when you look at our obviously Toto's played a fair bit sort of recently, but Pennington and Chambers, they're not neither of them are 
big centre backs are there that go up and you expect them to win their headers? I think Pennington scored. Was that a Birmingham? He scored from a corner. Yeah, it's a pretty scuffed goal. That was a sort of scuffed goal. Keane but... scored from a corner, didn't he? In the last minute against but, Stoke, but he's six yeah, foot three or whatever, isn't he? Not a defender yeah. either. We sort of yeah, defend. Nah. I mean, generally, our corners are shy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. generally. Um, these questions kind of follow from one another, so I'll read them out in order. Um, and we've kind of talked about this at the start as well, Joe. Um, oh, I don't think we have, actually. This is, these are about Lambert. Um, tricky, I made Tricky, but Trickerson. Um, have we gone down fighting like Paul Lambert promised? I, th- I think that is maybe a loaded question. Um, for, and what follows is um, from James Gold. Digs at Lambert are ridiculous. Give him 10 games in League One with a pre-season. Time to rem- remould the squad, then judge him. The squad right now is a mess. We need a summer, uh, the, the summer reset button. Thought on the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle, as always. But thoughts about um, whether Lambert is culpable. Uh, it, we've talked about percentages, didn't we, on a previous show? But maybe Tricky's suggestion is that maybe Lambert has given a lot of big talk, and on the on the pitch, not a huge amount has changed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, so what's the end? Is it twenty eight, twenty nine, twenty nine games? Is it now? Um, <sighs> Nothing much to say. I mean, he, he does. He, I mean, he, he's, what, what he's done, the PR he's done, and got the fans on side has been absolutely superb. But Tricky's quite right if he's intimating that that he's, he's still not shown to, for me. He's not shown it on the pitch yet. And I totally agree with with James that yeah, you have to give him certainly. The, obviously, the, the pre-season transfer window and yeah, ten games. What take that takes you into October? It sounds about right to me. Hmm. Joe, yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think. Um... The point about going down with a fight, I think you only have to look at, to, at the league table to see whether we've gone down with a fight. We've, we've gone down as one of the worst, my, what one of the worst teams in Championship history. We haven't, we haven't even got close to being back in the relegation fight. And I think, I say Lambert, yeah, twenty eight, twenty nine games, three wins. I don't think anyone would have expected him to do that badly from from when he came in, and he's done a lot of brilliant work off the pitch. And I think he has done brilliantly on that side but on the pitch he's he's yet to show it we we were trying to play out from the back when he first came in the center backs dropping wide the full midfielder dropping in the wing is pushing on and we were looking to do something you can see what he's trying to do over the last then we've had a sort of decent run of sort of decent 1-1 draws against better sides but I think the last sort of five going back to the whole game at home we've looked devoid of anything and whether that is just whether that's the injuries hitting home, and I think there is definitely an element of that because we have lost, like someone like John Nolan was looking like he was becoming a key player, and he's he gets injured. We've got no real like Sears is injured, Grant Ward is injured as a wide player, Jack Lancaster's injured as a wide player. We haven't really got those wide forwards for this role that we were using at the start. And that's how I think we can't get rid of Lambert now because no. then the last and it, it's not going to happen anyway but the last six months would have been a total waste if we get rid of him now we just have to all cross everything and hope that he is the right man and we're going to come in come back to pre-season he's got his business done early we we fly through pre-season and we start the season on fire because we're going to need to like you look at the teams at the top of league one there's, there's five teams up there that have got more than 80 points and could it push 90 points we're going to need to come in and be hit the door hit the ground running because we're going to be need to picking up two points a game if we want to challenge for automatic promotion yep. yeah I mean and uh, you know you look further you look more closely at the injuries and I know Harry's always um, Harry's big thing is about sort of combinations within the team isn't it and you, you know you look you forget about it you think wow Lancaster and Judge bloody hell you know there's certainly some some really exciting flair there potentially, but obviously we we you know we just haven't had the opportunity to to see that at all you know. Um, Sears is a shame. Sears, you know, you'd like to. Th- I mean, you know, obviously it seems he's going to be out till you know crucial. He's going to be out till Christmas, but he 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 I think would have been would have been one. You know, if he had came back, say you know fit again June July full pre season something like that. And yeah, you know, he had hit the ground run. I think he, he he could have a real impact in League One. But again, you know, we're going to have a quarter, a third of the yeah. season gone before we see him. Yeah, yeah, the injuries have, have taken a toll. Oh, yeah. again, it's a big factor. It's a it's a big factor. Yep. Um, Dan Shelcott, um, my mate Dan. Um, how can we make sure everyone stays positive for next season when we will probably finish the season? with four straight mm. defeats and we've talked about season ticket sales and yesterday and Friday not been great adverts for uh, season tickets. Um, how can we make sure everyone stays positive, Dave? It's 
it's a tricky one when you know there's a lot of huge amount of things that we else we've got going for us really maybe it's the under 23s and the under 18s maybe i don't know it is i suppose i mean yeah the positivity is is that yeah lambert's the only positivity is i suppose lambert's committed all right what he's done in the 28 29 games you almost got the as we said these last someone's i think stats said i know you guys have said it before you know these last few games almost got to start as a a, you know, see it as a pre-season, which let's face it, the, the sweeping changes he's making every game, he almost is, isn't he? Um, and I think you, you've just got to take that some sort, some sort of continuity into into next season. Whereas Joe's quite rightly said, we can't get rid of Lambert now. Uh, yeah, that'd just be six months, totally wasted, totally gone. We need that continuity, and and hopefully you just, you know, you just hit the ground, hit the ground running, um, and we make pull some rabbits out of hat. Signing wise, signing wise, you know. Yeah, I think maybe Leeds in the last day is not as daunting as maybe it was um, after their last few results such, as well. Such a shame, actually, because I was really looking forward to that. I really was with something on that game. That would have been, yeah, really, you know, it'll be a game. It'll be good, good atmosphere, and Leeds fans are going to come, whatever. But um, you know, with something on that game, that would have been really something to look forward to at the end of the season, wouldn't it? Mm. Or we'd probably yeah. Want it, but... yeah, it's a it's a real shame that at the end of the day, we're, we're not going to be playing many big games next season. And as a fan, I like to go to the big games. I might even yep. go to Sheffield United this weekend because that is going to be a big game now, where Leeds is going to be a dead rubber almost, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Joe, one for you from Andrew Humphrey. All our youngsters have technical ability, but what attributes do they currently lack? the most a need to improve for a full league one season um pay strength um or is it just experience durability they need to be able to get through games week in week out and until they try it we're not going to know whether they can i think flynn downs has shown that he probably has the and even tristan nidham i think those two have got the durability luke wolfen has played a lot of games down at swindon but dazel and lancaster they've they're going to have question marks over their durability until they string games together. Yeah. Um, I think Nidham's a strange one this season. That was, that was the oddest of the, the lot for me. Yeah. You know, bring We've him got, the, uh, bring him the, bring the on that one, Dave. Oh, go on. So hold Sorry, that yeah. thought. And we'll we'll come on. back. I'll come back to you on that one. Um, PRB nine. Um, can anyone give me any hope that anything will improve whilst Marcus Evans still owns the club? And there's already talk about little money being available in the summer and after. <laughs> Um, on, probably Joe. losing the four matches of the season. I can only see us continuing to plummet with the present squad. PRB9, come on. Chin up, well, mate. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like if, if Lambert can get it to work on the pitch, he, he knows what he's doing off the pitch. He, uh, he seems to understand the me- mentality of a football fan. Leo Neal seems to have a better grasp of the community than other people have had. The club are reopening the community trust, which I think was a big wrong of Evans' regime, which is being righted. Only one of the, so that, we were one of the 92 that didn't have a community trust, I think. Well, right. we were one. Of, we were one of the only clubs which had had it, where Prince it's... Charles as the Prince's Trust, and it was seen as a really highly commended one. And then we became the only club without one, and yeah. that was a that was a big black mark against Evans for a lot of people. And he maybe he's got some people around him that understand more about the community and are trying to pick it up from that side. And hopefully, with the blue action guys and the atmosphere they're creating, the season ticket offering that they've put out there, if things can click on the pitch, maybe the club will be in a better place. But we're not going to be competing at the top end of the championship for a, a long time. Mm. Mate, if, honestly, if I mean, like how I see it, if Lambert can transfer what he's done off the pitch to on the pitch, we'll romp the league by 10 points. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, what he's done off the pitch is incredible, really. Absolute, to think where we were before he came is pretty remarkable. But, yeah, I think Joe's right. Um, it's going to be tough, tough, tough next year. Points week. win prizes, as the old cliche goes. Um, yeah. Supplementary question, Dave. Pets. What, pets win prizes. I, no comment. And, <laughs> that's thrown me off, Joe. I've <laughs> and I've, I've only I can't multitask either, so I can't think think of a witty retort for that one. Um, so I'll stick with um, Dave. <laughs> Tom Loki asks, um, should we have a director of football? Who's planning for the long term? Do our signings in youth development have this in mind? Do our managers have too much control? Um, Leo Neal is not really a director of football, is he, Joe? Well, he's basically, he's director of football operations and he's the academy manager and is getting involved in recruitment. So presumably he he is now it. Okay. A director of football, an experienced director of football is a gnarly old football man. I think that's probably what Tom's going to mind. Bags of experience. Um, in fairness to O'Neill, a lot of the a lot of the best directors of footballs have come from the background of being an academy manager into 
So you sort of Dan Ashworth's England and your yeah, Chelsea guy. Les Regis. They've come in because I suppose running an academy is like running a football club. You don't want to be bringing people in for every team because you've got to not block the pathways for people to come through it. So there's probably more in common with that than there is in running a football club. But it's just, is the job too big for Leo Neal if he doesn't get help for him he's still the academy manager he's now this director of football effectively he's doing Ian Milne's job for him Evans is turning up not enough so that's where he needs the support to actually give him a chance to see if he can do the job as a director of football mm, yep um, Stephen Moore um, does the increasing level of grumbling about Lambert mean that Evans has been let off the hook by the majority of ITFC fans again. Dave, any thoughts on yeah, people focusing in the wrong places? Yeah, potentially potentially has been because I haven't heard many Andy Evans chants down at Portman Road, have you? No. Not really? No? no? I don't think. So, yes, is the answer to that, I, w- I would say, in a, yeah, in a sort of barbed way. It's quite, yeah, when you put it that way, it's quite odd, isn't it? He, I think he has been let off, um, let off light. And there is always talk, you know, you see the odd tweet and the odd thing on Facebook and these perhaps action groups and stuff like that but but no I think he has got off lightly compared to what you've seen at other other clubs I think that's the general comparison people have made is other clubs they'd be up in arms they'd be tennis balls and on the pitch tennis balls and, yeah of course yeah um, I think the problem with Evans is he's just more of an incompetent owner than a terrible one, if that makes sense. He just yeah, makes bad decisions before, yeah. rather than be, rather than being yeah, like when you see the Charlton owners, the Blackpool, where Blackpool. they just or Coventry, Rash. where they have seem to have no care or interest in the club. He's yeah. just a sort of just like a bumbling fool running a club rather than a nasty bloke. He just made some really, really, really bad decisions, but there you go. Let's do a couple more on Lambert and Evans and then we'll get into kind of the lot the tactics and players and stuff like that. Arthur Pickthorn, um, how far off the mark is Lambert when he says these last four games make no difference to next season? Two average performances so far, while these next two could be very ugly in selection and tactics. Um, For Swansea, made a little sense to him. Um, I can feel the faith in Lambert dropping slightly. Um, Thoughts on Lambert yesterday or after Swansea did said at least we haven't gone down with a whimper. Um, Preston and Swansea were a bit of a whimper, weren't they, Dave? Yeah. Absolutely. And we could, you know, if we're not careful, these last two games, we could get absolutely walloped. Then you really don't want that. The flip side of that, these last two games could be, you know, if they can, you know, recapture the, I don't know, the form, the durability, to use the word Joe used earlier, that they they perhaps showed against West Brom away, Bristol City away, and get a couple of performances out like that, then then fine, you know, you get, um, you you know, you, you, (laughs) it's odd, but you, you, you finish the season on a bit of a, say, I'm not high, but on a positive note. But yeah, um, conceivably, this these two games could be quite horrible <laughs> because there's nothing really. There's no pressure, you know. After results a weekend on either of those two, you know, Sheffield United and Sheffield United and Leeds, there's no real, real pressure on them, is there? Yeah. Really? All right, they need a point, but realistically, they don't. You See, know, I watched, I, I watched Sheffield United against Forest on Friday, and that that was that was nervy until they got that first goal. And... Yeah. But great result yesterday. What a result. Hell of a result, yeah. You know, and they score early and they just, they say the difference of Sheffield United compared to, they were talking about Norwich, they compared it to Norwich yesterday, all right, we'll put that, park that to one side. But they said even when Norwich went one up, they still looked quite, quite nervy and stuff like that. Sheffield United went one up and just went for the jugular yesterday. On, yeah. on Friday, they did. They, 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 yeah, they, they didn't on Friday, but now, but now they're in a position where it's back in their hands now. Yeah. And maybe I don't know. That could, that could be a nervy game for Sheffield United up there. But if they, if they score, then we're they, so they, benevolent. They, they, could, win, we? they we'll could concede after two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. All the time that we're so benevolent. You know, if it, you know, either, even in previous years, not not given our position in the crap scenes we've had. Even in previous years, Ipswich at home in a game with high stakes. Yeah. It's, a, it's almost a given, isn't it? We well, see Three, even, yeah. even this week, Preston lost four in a row. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. And a long we'll get switch. Yeah. We'll Swansea get lost seven away right. games in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Swansea's on. seven away games. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Um, I think we've dealt with Lambert and Evans <laughs> enough there, gents. So I think there's a few more questions there. So apologies to folks on that. But I think I think we've dealt with that one. Um, let's turn to the playing staff for a few more. Um, Daryl, our mate Daryl. Um, when will we see the best to judge or have we? Um, his set pieces are erratic. Um, and disappointing, no goals. He's very busy on the pitch, but seems to be intent on playing all ten outfield I positions think, at once. So we talked about this a little bit, but I think he needs to. He needs to just have a little bit. Look, all right, Joe's probably right. Yeah, you want him to have as much of the ball, and you want him to sort of play off the cuff. But 
he needs a little bit more structure. <laughs> Lou to be structured a little bit, I think. And I like to see him, as Joe said, you know, starting from it, starting from between the, you know, between the penalty area, between the lines there, rather than out wide drifting, you know, drifting in. Yep. I think he's wasted there. Yep, I agree with that. Um... He should rip. He, he should rip. He should be one of the one of the top players in League One, surely. Gotta if be. he stays in touch, would stay yeah, fit. Yeah, until he but, gets yeah, smashed on the first day of the season yeah, by Lincoln. Um, yeah. Craig, um, Craig F., um, why is it when we play 4-3-3, it's never 4-3-3, and it's always 4-5-1 with an isolated centre striker getting very little support from wide or middle? Was the, It was the same under McCarthy. Goals will get us promoted. Our team seems bereft of them currently. Um, Joe, thoughts on... When is four three three not a four three three? And your yeah, your right. stuff from who scored from uh, from Friday? Well, yeah, when it, when Ipswich Town play, it's not a four three three, is it? It's a four five one. When when Lambert first came in, and we were playing Jordan Roberts up front as a target man, and we all, we all knew he wasn't the greatest player and probably wasn't going to make the best impact at this level. But you look at that Reading goal; he goes up for the goal kick, either flicks it on or misses it, but it gets through. Freddie Sears is running off him. Bristol City, Freddie Sears runs off him. Gwion Edwards was getting around him, but whether it's a lack of but Sears has been just as guilty in the past of playing wide in a four three three and it being a four five one. The players need to be given the confidence from the manager. And I think when Lancaster was here under Lambert, he was told, "Don't worry about defending, get on the ball and make things happen." And we just seem to have, I don't know whether Lambert, because we were trying to win every game but losing it, losing more more often than not. He like when you look at his previous record, he's always talked about how he doesn't like draws. Well, we've drawn about at one point it was like eight, eight out of eleven. Yep. So has he has he bottled it a little bit in to try and tighten up. try and pick up a few more points and tighten up? And hopefully when we well not hopefully but when we drop down into League One, hopefully he goes back to how he was and tries to get back on winning games because it's it's going to be wins that are going to get us out of that division, not draws. And you need those orthodox wide players that are up there. And we've we've missed Sears, we've missed Lancaster, if we talked about. Edwards has kind of done it in patches as well, but maybe it's just a lack of personnel and to play. If that. you're going to... And sort of going back to Alan Judge, where he's playing, if you're playing a 4 3 3 and Judge is one of your three up up top, he isn't going to get in and around a strike. He's going to drop deep. He's, going to be in that, he's got to be in that middle three, and that, that front three has got yep. to be... Your Sears is your Lancasters, your Edwards, your Jacksons, your Keens, whoever it wants to be. You've got to have three attackers in that three, or at least two attackers and one winger in that three. You can't have wide midfielders and your Idris El Mazunis and people like that. They are not attackers, and they need to be attackers up there. Mm. Do you think? Do you think Ward will stay, Joe? I I don't personally. I I think he probably probably suits all parties for him to get a fresh start. Mm. I think he's. I'd imagine. I don't know how his injury is looking, but that was on Boxing Day, did that, wasn't it? So it wouldn't surprise me if he's back for pre-season and he ends mm-hmm. up picking up a deal, but I, I, I don't know exactly. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if he's here next year, personally. David, just a continuation of the question we just had um, from Craig. Um, Dean Mitchell, what, um, I know what you're, I, I suspect well, there'll be good support for this. Um, why no two up front? It's so frustrating. The middle midfield of two potential players to pass to rather than one obvious ball out. And if a forward wins the ball, they have another player near them to pass to. We must do that next season. Thoughts on two up front? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, choir, where, did we look, where did we look quite good? Was it, where did we play the other week? It was it Birmingham? We played Birmingham, Birmingham yeah. and we went two up second half, didn't we? Most of the second half. We looked really, really good. Really good. And, and then, you know, at Preston, just abandoned. Um I, I sort of get it away from home, but yeah, we're down. So why not? But but we're down. So why not play it? We must, in my opinion, must must go with two up. But he just seems dead against it, doesn't he? It's just not his uh, not his way. Yeah. Um. Let's. I've got three more for you. Um. This one from Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy. Dave, I'll go back to you because it's it's what we talked about about Nidham. Um. Who's had the biggest waste of a season? I think Nidham after showing promise last season. Um. The signing of Teo Aiden. Uh, remember him. Um, a very similar player was bizarre. Hoping um, yeah. Nidham has a part to play next season. Thoughts on um, who's had the biggest waste of a season? Ignoring those who've missed huge chunks of it through injury, but poor old Nidham, it's not been a I'd good season. I'd say him. I'd say certainly say him and his development. Absolutely spot on. Um, I just right. didn't. Say, I said that straight away. They just seem so similar. All right, Eden had a bit more experience. I think he'd been away with the England under 19s, Joe, under 18s, 19s, wherever he's yeah, playing. Yeah, 19s. Yeah. And so he came from Fulham. Obviously, came from Premier Club. But 
I just didn't see it at all. And they were, to me, they were absolutely identical players. Um, obviously, Hurst, Hurst took a decision on him, um, you know, early se- well, no, mid uh, pre-season, early season, and um, just didn't didn't fancy him. But to my mind, you know, putting injuries to one side and and everything else, long-term absentees, yeah, he's been the biggest waste because I just think there was a player there and he was really starting to show it last season. He had a good few starts last season, Joe. Um, and I just think it's just knocked his development totally. And he's barely showed. He, Bristol City came on, I think. Bristol City. Brentford, was it? Was it, was it Brentford? Brentford, yeah. you're right. I think it was Brentford. I know it was on, yeah, I was watching on Red Button or whatever I was watching, yeah. Um, yeah, um, and he's with, and I think he didn't, it didn't really, he wasn't a regular up there. St. Johnston, wasn't it? I don't think he was a yeah. regular there. Was he no, either. no, no. Um, barely played. It's just, I, I, yeah, uh, so ruined a play. I think he was, um, Joe. You'd know this, wasn't he? Wasn't he one that Dyer, Dyer always championed, didn't he? Kieran Dyer. Kieran said, Dyer and this, Mick, Mick McCarthy as well, especially. And Mick McCarthy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he said, look, this, this is the next big thing, and he did. You know, when he came in the side last season, oh, he really. I thought he just looked the part, and I think he played. Yeah, I'm sure he played pre-season friendly with them all against um, when Wolfenden played as well against yeah, West, West Ham. Ham. And. I, just look the part. He's a really nice footballer, but yeah, that that to me has been a real, real shame. And you know, hopefully, get back pre-season and show show what he's got and, and be in and around the team next year because I think he's a great little player. Mm. Um, Cornish, on a similar on a similar vein to that, as well, you could you could include Ben Morris as well. He's came on on the first day of the season, looked sharp. Yeah. We've been yeah, crying out. Score. Goes to Forest Green, plays bugger all. We've been crying out for a wide striker. He comes back. I know he's been injured, but. Wasted months out of Forest Green not playing, and yeah, was he it, was he cruciate? Was he cruciate as well? He's cruciate as well, yeah. You know. Goes back to the durability point, doesn't it? I mean, um, Cornish Mariner and uh, Mick Mills at uh, full time said only Judge and Nolan would be certainties yeah, for the team next uh, next year before yeah. pre-season. Yeah. Would you add anyone else to that list? If not, who is nearest? He's suggested Bishop and Downs. Joe, any thoughts well, on the guarantee well, well, starters? If, if Bart stays, he's a guaranteed starter. Yeah. So yeah. I think he's he's one that you can say. And realistically, Chambers is a guaranteed starter, I think, realistically, isn't he? And then, I don't know, from that, I wouldn't say anyone else because of you're looking at numbers in the middle there. If Hughes is fit, he's going to start, but how likely is he going to be to be fit? Be fit. But... Yeah, Dave, any, anyone to add into that? Chambers. <laughs> um no, I don't think so. No, I agree with that. I think Nolan was showing really well. So, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, Nolan, Judge. Uh, yeah, Joe's right. Bart, if he stays, Hughes is his fit. And it pains me to say it, but yeah, probably Chambers. Look, they're going to need some experience down, as we said, right the way through. They're going to need some experience down that spine of the team. And he does give you that. I th- he certainly lost at a championship, whether whether League One is, whether he's up to the rigours of League One or not, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I'd, 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 I think I'd largely agree with that. There's some I mentioned Downs. I mean, Downs, I think, made He was good yesterday. Down. Yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's a funny one, Downs. And he, he <laughs> again, he has, again, but he's a young player. He has, he, I think he has, a, he has ups and downs, doesn't he? Quite ups really? and, you know, then, 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 well, you know, you know, and then he left, you know, left certain games and he's, oh, really, he'll give the ball away. He's, and he's knocked off the ball. And other games, he's really spiked and he's, you know, he's but you know, he's he's shown his strength, he's winning balls and he's giving it and apparently he had a similar game to that yesterday. So again a lot of the a lot of things with these young players just it, it's one durability and just consistency. Finding that consistency is difficult. Really that, difficult. T- that takes it takes a run of games to get that yeah, consistency. It does. It, it does. It really and does. From the season ticket brochure, that is what these players are gonna be getting. But We'll see how that actually pans out in next season. Yeah. It's gonna, it's, yeah, it's An gonna indictment play. of the squad, nevertheless, if, if Mick Mills, who, who knows his stuff, uh, whether we agree with him or not, um, calls I don't think two you, I don't think you could, dis- when he said that, I, don't, I, I, I thought, yeah, he's probably got Both it about right, really. has been a problem for a while, haven't they? Let's be honest. Um, let's, um, I've got one more question to ask. I just need to apologise. To, we've had a load of questions, as you'd expect. I think we've covered the main topics. Um, Chris Hodges, Edward Croft, um, Stephen Folkes, um, Tom Dixon, I don't know, um, Dylan, um, Nick, um, Benjamin, as always, Mullet, Matt Makin, Ollie Mara, mate. Sorry, all the great questions, it's just timing, guys. And um, again, we've kind of dealt with a lot of these topics. Let's end with one with a little bit of a light note. Um, Mrs. Nuts, our hey. good friend, Mrs. Nuts. Bart has shaved his beard off. What <laughs> pointless and ridiculous reasons can we all read into this? What does it mean? 
<laughs> Joe, you've shaved your beard off. Oh, you have, Joe, yeah. It's been a long time like that, though, hasn't it? Um, I don't know, really. I, has, has that improved anything well, was, in your life? Um, well, I can't talk publicly about what it's improved. So. <laughs> <laughs> family show, family show. <laughs> well, it's, I say. I, 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 I assume that Bart's beard is not a, a, a kind of physical representation of the inner turmoil like Roy Keane's beard was. Um, no, I think it's. I think it's probably to <laughs> increase his lap times on the swimming pool he's installed in his garage block at his house. There you go. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's. Um, maybe it's to boost his transfer price. Who knows? Thank you there for you the go. questions. Brilliant stuff. Thank you both for that, Joe. That would have been a real slog if, for you on your own. So, um, good on Dave for um, for giving you cool. some backup there. Um, should we quickly do the roundup because. <laughs> Great. It's uh, going to yeah, be the worst for the lot, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, Stoke 2, Norwich 2. Norwich um, kind of oh. just kind of got to the line, but they're scraping to get across it. Tell now, you what, they? on that note, I very rarely do it anymore. I used to last season mm. when, they're, when they're losing regularly. It was quite funny, but I actually went on the rough of the Barkley, you know, there, <laughs> with yeah. the TWTD. And after that game, in between that game, the, the half an hour between that game and the Leeds game, there was some serious panic, serious <laughs> shitting themselves honestly oh we're completely you know we're throwing this away I mean, and a lot of that on there and obviously a couple of hours later I didn't even bother going back on a couple of hours later but yeah I'd assume it was much more positive but yeah there was some serious serious wobbling going on there four draws in a row last minute goals again um, but yeah Stoker is starting to get a little bit more solid so that's a decent result for them but Norwich um, pretty much home and hose now it's a, bit, it's a bit like the season we went up in 91-92 although we lost a few games in like the running but we almost stumbled over the line didn't we got yeah that, that was a good one on the history the history point about Newcastle that 3-2 win after that yeah. one it was pretty that, squeaky bum wasn't it for a bit oh god it was yeah I think we lost Bristol City Sunderland we scraped a few draws and stuff and you know, we stumbled and it was only because I think Borough and people behind us just just were dropping points left right and centre always seems a way doesn't it Team stumble I over guess, the line. I guess so. Unless you're a Newcastle or Wolves last year, or Newcastle, or something like that. But how the hell? I mean, that that Ben summed it up really well on Friday, wasn't it? Whenever the game was, the um, the Leeds Wigan result was our crew in 1999 yeah. or 98, whenever it was, wasn't it? Absolute classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hull nil, Sheffield United three. The David McGoldrick show, gentlemen. Did you see the goals? A nice header. And a long yeah. range curler. Um, he was he was brilliant when I watched him against Forrest on Friday. Wow. He just ran the show and sounds like he's really come into form this business end of the season. Him. Given his fitness over the last few years, he's just got stronger and better as a as a, well, obviously he's got more games under his belt but as the season's gone on. What yeah. a season he's had. Disappointing. What a and two oh. wins for Sheffield United over the Easter weekend and two defeats for Leeds. Brentford 2, Leeds 0. Um, Bamford denied a pretty oh. blatant penalty from our good mate Keith Stroud. And then Canos and Mope um, assisting goals, swapping round for the first and the second. Um, Leeds are falling apart again, Dave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you can see, all right, they won't, although they're going to finish third, aren't they? I mean, chances are they could be playing. What, is it going to be derbies? I can't, can't work out the... Yeah, Derby, Borough, Derby or Borough, Bristol City. City yeah. Derby, Borough, Bristol City. So, Mike, but, but you've got a fancy Villa going at those players. Well, oh, Villa, God. 10 wins in a row. It's all about momentum. My God. Yeah, 1 0 yeah. over uh, Millwall, um, 10 wins in a row. And no one would want to play them in the playoffs, would they? Sounds like Tyrone Mings has been brilliant since he signed for him. Yeah. 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 Jack, Jack Greenish, so the main man. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, running in. things, and they got they got goal scorers, haven't they? I mean, yesterday was Codge yesterday, but yeah, when they got Abraham Codge, uh, people like that, they, and begin yeah, score, they'll, they'll, they'll be, score. They will be tough. They oh, will Garzi. be tough. Yeah, yeah. cool. A Leeds Bobby Villa Fury. playoff final. That'll be. Oh. A... Was it Leeds oh, Villa okay. on Saturday? Yeah, it's this yeah. Saturday. Um, so that... Sunday it is actually. Oh, Sunday. Yeah, Leeds um, play catch up. Yeah. Reading, who have um, ever since we've played Reading and lost to them, they've. Um, done pretty well to make themselves safe. A good nil-nil draw against West Brom, who are um, well secure in fourth for their uh -huh. playoff place. Um, Forest three, Borough nil. Um, Borough so up and down, but that was a pretty Borough. bad defeat for Borough. Um, they are seventh. They're level on um, 
points with Derby who are sixth, but really up and down form for them. That's not very really tuned. Derby got a game like, in hand. Derby might have a game in they hand. They do. They actually, yeah, you're right. It's against Bristol City though, I think. Oh yes, it is. You're right. Yeah, yep. Swansea that. aren't far off either. They're not. Well. If they hadn't lost their last seven away games, <laughs> <laughs> well, they've they've yeah won f- uh, last um, five. Uh, they've only lost one out of the last five Swansea actually. They've just yeah. not played away by the look of it until um, a long coming switch. <laughs> um, Sheffield Wednesday are just outside the mix, but they beat Bristol City. Um, streaky Lee Cracker from Bannon. Did you see this one, gents? A good girl. No, I haven't seen it. No. Um, well, let's move right. on then. Um, Derby to QPR nil. Late show here. Two goals in injury time. Um, iffy penalty. Um, Harry Wilson with both those goals. Um, who, who's who's going to get the sixth position for you guys? Derby, Borough, Bristol City, Sheffield Wednesday, hovering around but probably too far away. Who's who's your pick? I think Derby. I think Derby. For I me. think Derby. If they survive intact against Bristol City, get a result, don't lose that game, then I think Derby. Um, a couple of Lancashire derbies Wigan 2 Preston 0 um, Blackburn 2 Bolton 0 um, Bolton obviously relegated um, La, um, Friday mm-hmm. I think it was um, but yeah along come Ipswich Preston um, on a really crappy run and they turned that around by beating us 4-0 and then they lose to Wigan um, that tells you everything you need to know about us um, and finally Rotherham who probably just looking one at the league table game. yeah and Birmingham have got to 50 points for the second time this season and beat Rotherham 3-1 away there. Do we think it's Rotherham for that last relegation spot, gents? I think yes. so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I won't bother with the extrapolation. Um, as we talked about, we are not statistically the worst team in the championship era, um, but we're not a million miles away. Um, I don't Is it still Rotherham? It's still, still Rotherham. Rotherham. We've only got, seasons. I think it's two more points we've got than them, but I'm sure the uh, wins is... Up, up, until, up until sort of some point last season, we were the all-time top of the championship table because we'd been in it every year since it's been the championship. But Derby, despite having one season away, have overtook us last year and I'd imagine have pulled... Well, they have obviously pulled further and further ahead this year, so I don't know where we are now. Oh, uh, yeah, I shudder to think. Um I, I, yeah, so I'm not going to do extrapolation. I've given you all the all the results there. Um, let's not talk about the league. Um, let's distract ourselves. Joe Fares has designed a slight evolution on the CV game, and I am committed, like he did for my CV game, to absolutely ruin slaughter it, Joe. Him, to absolutely slaughter it. Do you want to explain yeah, it? And we'll, um, okay, if, well, if this works, so we, we'll try next season, maybe. When we say I've designed it, I've shamelessly stolen it from the Football Ramble. <laughs> All so. the best stuff is nicked from somewhere. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to take any credit for it, but basically it's a, it's a CV game where... I name a player who has played for a certain number of clubs and then you basically take turns to bet on how many of those clubs you can name. And it's basically, if you say, if Rich says he can name three, Dave either has the option to call him out and say, name those three, yeah. or to say he can name four and then Rich can either call him out or name five. So we'll go from there. I've got three players here. The first player. So I, I don't know who wants to go first on this because it's, so go on, you, you go first. first. I'll go, go on, first. Rich, you go first. Okay, so it is Bartos Bielkowski, Bielkowski <sighs> who who has played five clubs. So I could definitely do three. Um, I can't. No, nah, I can't name him. Go on, yeah. Um, go on, Rich. Notts County, oh. Ipswich, and Southampton. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's a point to Rich. He also played for. Gornick Zabstreet. Oh, that was it. It was on the t- tip of my tongue. And, yeah. and, and had a loan spell at Bolton. Did he? Okay. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, Barnsley. 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 There you go. Okay. Oh, hang on. So I could have, if, if I could have said, Barnsley. I could have said three. All right. I could have still said three. No, no, oh, I said. One, yeah. you, could have had you, could, you could have had a guess at four. And if you'd have got uh, it wrong, okay, got lost. Okay, so, got it, got it. So yeah, if yeah, you okay. do the three. Okay. The next one is for Dave to go first here is Paul Cooper. Uh, I could do four. I could do four. Okay, he's played for six clubs, one of which was a non non league team, so sort of five league clubs. Um, I could do four. I'll let Dave do four. It's not my era. I can. I think I might have a guess at the non league team, but I know I only need two. So Dave, go for it. Um, Paul Cooper, uh, Birmingham, Ipswich, uh, Leicester, Man City. Yep, yeah. and 
The non-league um, team, Rich. Was it? It wasn't Cat- Solio, was it? No, Sutton Anna- Coldfield. Oh. Sutton Coldfield. I knew it was somewhere around here. Was he, he born also, in Solio? Um, he's somewhere up that way, isn't he? He also yeah. played for Stockport, was the team that he played for. Oh, okay. So this is a decider. A decider. Go on. Rich, Rich, go first. Go on, Rich. And it is your namesake, Richard Wright, who's played for eight clubs. Wowzers. Um, played for, the def- as in made an appearance? No, as in signed professional terms. Right, for okay. Eight clubs. Um, what, has he? Uh, I'll go with five. I think I'll go five. I might be, yeah. Can we get, or if he goes six, can I go seven? Yeah. Let's see if I can write him down quickly. Go on, Davis, on you. I think I said five, didn't I? Uh, yeah, Bridget said five. So Dave, uh, uh, Ivan needs to go uh, six. Um, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on, wait a minute, hang on. Uh, 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 I can certainly do five. Um, yes, you got you got to top it, or you got to call me out. I think. You, you, <sighs> Might as well have a go at six, I reckon. Go on, Dave. Um, uh, Ipswich. Yep, one. Arsenal. Yep. Everton. Yep. West Ham. Yep. Man City. Yep. And it's an easy one, isn't it? If he'd listened to the preview show, Joe, <laughs> he'd be walking away the winner. Yeah. And um, hang on, wait a minute. And uh, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. And oh, Preston, Preston, Boom. that is six. So Dave well wins played, two to Dave. one. Two one. The other two clubs were Southampton and Sheffield United. God, I don't remember wow. either of those. I don't remember no. either. Of those. I'd imagine Southampton was when Malcolm Webster was down there. Because Preston, did he not go and didn't play or play yeah, once? He, or... No, he, 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 signed in, he signed in. He signed in July. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, he was in our combined eleven for the uh, for the previous. Oh, show. was he? Signed in July, um, and then said he was homesick, and then a week later signed for Man City to boost their English players' <laughs> quota for the Champions League. I'd, I'd imagine having Graham Wesley as your manager probably. Could make. I'd, I'd feel homesick in Kesgrave. Wesley was on the from Rushbit. And, and, and Wrighty is still on there. He still appears on their bench now and he's again. On, doesn't he's he? a not, coach. not on yeah. their bench. Uh, he's as a goal coach. You see him in yeah. the background, don't you? There's an yeah, Amazon I mean, Prime documentary about Man City, and he crops up every now and there. He, he's, oh, does he? He's got the Man iPad City. to show the key to Claudio Bravo for the penalties. I think in the League Cup. So. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, a, yeah. that format works really well, Joe. I think. Um, that's quite good. Yeah. We'll need to That's figure out good. how to f- find the players so that there's... Because obviously Dave had the advantage of Paul Cooper, but I guess Richard Wright, you've got uh, yeah, interesting stuff. That was really good. Gents, um, let's do a bit of a, a wrap-up, shall we? Um, Sheffield United on Saturday, live on telly. 2-0, um, 1-0 or 4-0? Which are you going for? <laughs> I've, I think I've got to go for the closer to the 4-0, I think, unfortunately. I th- yeah, I, I think 2 two or 3, I'd guess. Yeah. But like I say, if we, if we can... If it can be nil nil after about an hour, I'd imagine yeah. that's going to be really it, nervy. But it, it looks like one of those games where it's like, oh, if we keep them to nil nil and within four or five minutes Early they'll, goal, they'll score a goal, the crowd will bollocks. lift, and then that'll be just a sort of festival of football for the Blades after that. <laughs> <laughs> and a goal from a goal drink is inevitable, isn't it? Lump on, I would suggest. Nailed, nailed on, isn't it? I was a bit, I was a bit um, surprised. I don't know if he's injured. I don't know. Again, I. I I must admit, I didn't hear the, the preview show, but Selena weren't in the squad yesterday, was he? No, in no, I think. It's a shame. Yeah, yeah I, I, that was a bit of a surprise that he wasn't there for me. Yeah, really yeah, um, yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. It'll be an occasion, won't it? Hell of an occasion. I mean, you think Bramall Lane will be heaving? I just think it's, it's all thick, good atmosphere it? there, won't it? Yeah. Sold out now, I think. Yeah, yeah. it's all that. It's ticket, all that. Um, that won't. Yeah, that'll be tough. Um, but it's on. T- it's on. It's five fifteen. It's five fifteen it? game on Saturday. Yeah, so you Ow. can you can watch that um, <laughs> from the comfort of your armchair, and I think, you can turn I it off. I believe you can watch that, and if you're if you're statistic enough, you can you can stay tuned to see the Norwich City um, oh, current we... champion coronation, can't you? They got Blackburn. Uh, Tony Mowbray's Blackburn. <laughs> Hopefully they might do us a favour. Who knows? You never um, know. Joe, you said you were going to put up the details for the under eighteen and under twenty three games on your academy Twitter. Do you want to tell us what that is first of all, and then is it is it confirmed that it's Saturday? Do you know? No, no, nothing is confirmed yet. Okay. It's at itfc underscore academy. I'll be keeping an eye out on sort of the good sites like Youth Hawk, which is a really good 
um, sort of site which lists a lot of the youth football, the Premier League publication when they come out. As soon as I hear anything, I'll put it on there. But I might not hear anything until the last minute because it's generally not the best organised. Okay. And your normal Twitter account, where can we find you? Yep, at Joe Fairs. Great stuff. And Dave, whispers I hear of uh, this week in ITFC history. There is. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it last last week. But yeah, there's one. The game's uh, stats now. Got got all the games to do. So he's just got to get rid of his um, groin strain, hamstring, whatever he's got. And then uh, we'll be back back doing it, I think. But obviously, he's had about an eight-week holiday. Isn't he? He's back at work now, isn't he? Obviously, he works at the school. Holiday, so, yeah. You know, whatever they have. Yeah. And yeah. only work half days anyway, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And your Twitter, where can we find you on Twitter? At David Diamond 3. At David Diamond 3. Um, you can find me at Ips Rich um, and our channel at Blue Monday ITFC. Um, I'll be back mm-hmm. with the brilliant Harry from Bath for mm-hmm. the Sheffield United preview. We'll tell you how good they are, mm-hmm. how many goals they're going to score, mm-hmm. and what formation we won't be playing. Um, so that will be entertaining for everyone. Um, and gentlemen, thank you again. Joe, thank you for being a stalwart, being there from minute one. Hero yeah. as always, and Dave, thank you for joining us and sorting out your instant. Yeah, when you can. I got, got there when I could, you know. <laughs> saved, saved Joe's bacon for the questions. Like one of Cole Skews' tackles. Got there when I could. Got there in the end. Gentlemen, have yeah. a great week, and um, we'll speak soon. Cheers, cheers Rich. All right, cheers, cheers, Joe. From back to back to Stewart. Oh, he turns to defend the sweetly. Round the goalkeeper and scores a magnificent.